Alright, so today I'm going to be taking apart my uh, workhorse for the lab. Corad KA3305 digital control DC power supply 30 volts 5 amps times 2 plus 5 volts at allegedly 3 amps. Whew, mouthful. Anyways, I was running this charging a battery or attempted to yesterday set it at 14 volts 2 amps the battery was already I don't know 90% charged whatever I had it turned on because I was using the channel 1 on something else uh, as soon as I made contact I heard an arc so I saw that it was loading it down completely I pulled it off and then it started doing something very very funny I guess I need to have power before I can turn it on. Sorry about the flashing. I know it sucks, but yeah, um, I was doing that no matter what uh, I was on. At first, I kind of thought it was, I don't know, maybe a relay, like welded contacts or something. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. So, as you can see, like, it got a pretty funny scope readout. Before I actually hooked up the scope, I was going through voltages just to see what was what. And... It's coming up with that. That's what I had set it on. Power supply was saying that, and my DVM. That was saying the third row. And it was actually pulling current when there was nothing hooked up to it. Not a lot. No milliamp until, I don't know, like 10 volts was what it was set to, and then ended up getting up to like 15 milliamps when it was at 31 volts. And when it goes to 31 volts, it does that nice little trick and goes to the actual 33.83. I don't know. I'm assuming that's straight from the tap. But from that waveform, it almost made me think, like, I don't know, a failure in the feedback loop or something I don't know if you can hear that on there the relays are switching off and on and they generally click in at about 6 volts 11 and a half and then 22.5 and that was on ch channel 1 with no load hooked up to it and channel 2 is all over 19 for its second one yeah so I don't know if it actually has like a regulator that's fucked up in it or yeah, I, I really don't know don't know what it could be it's curious just because it's an inductive load and uh it was the same thing that killed Dave EE vlog e -E -V blogs power supply um the inductive kick killing the diode I'm gonna check that just because that, for the sole fact that when I put it on it was reading fine it was when I took it off is when it died or started to shit the bed and that's how the inductive kickback works once it the current flow is trying to be stopped that's when the huge negative spike comes through and yeah so anyways I don't know what else I can show or tell right now besides just taking it apart so without further ado safety first you're off unplug Or nuts. 
God damn it, screws off of this fucking thing. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry. Nope. Ah, oh, fuck it, that's gonna be good enough. I should. Now, I've had this thing for a very, very long time. Alright, like, not a lot, but three years. Three and a half years. It has served me very well in my refining lab. It's refined thousands of grams worth of silver. And, yeah, uh, I put this thing to work. So, I'm assuming it's going to be, yeah, the... the Poor screws up there, they're uh, all rusted from being in the acidic environment. Bolts on the transformer. Or the nuts, god damn it. Uh, overall, not bad though. Power coming in to the board. I wonder if that relay is uh, like for a soft start or not. Well, I think it would be because it's an actual clunking power switch up there. But I don't know. Alright, so it has the little switch on the back so you can switch between 120 and uh, your 250, 220 volt regional shit. And. Oh, it's got two those fats now. Those are uh, BJTs. And then three big rectifiers there. And then a fifth. Yeah, fifth BJT. Okay, I don't know. So I would assume it's probably doing. I don't know, maybe two for one channel, two for another, and then one back there for the five volt channel. Sorry, dicking with the zoom again. But I guess we'll see. Is there really not a fuse in this thing? I mean, I got the varistor there, but. Ah, uh, no. There we go. That's in there. Dumbass. So, uh, power coming over. These are the relays that's going to switch in the different taps for the transformer. So, like the 6 volt and, well, alright. There's 1, 2, 3 switch ends. 6, 11 and a half, and 20 and a half. Two for each channel, presumably. So is that a soft start? I don't know. It doesn't matter. So I'm just hoping that it's something relatively easy to fix. What are these back here? Okay. So uh, to us. The 1047s are the BJTs. Those two poorly heat sink TO220s are uh, the 7812s. That's a 7805. We got two tiny little BJTs there. Oh, those are ICs, not transistors, sorry. That's the 7912, so there's its negative rail. Um, well, I guess... Like, damn, I don't even know. I guess we can start it something simple. Uh, 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 yeah, that's probably channel one, that's probably channel two. So we'll set that there and hopefully it won't take over. We'll 
set that there. You see that? Is that better? Here. Pump this up with fitting the DC power supply handbook. All right. Check this one, it should be good. All right. 511 millivolts. If I can get at this one. Well, son of a bitch. That's obviously not what it's supposed to be reading. That's far from 511 millivolts. But. Man, it's been a long time since I watched that video of EV blog. I don't know if he had the same kind of failure, like uh, the yeah, obviously the same kind of failure, but uh, the symptoms of it. That's something. Oh, those poor things. You can see how. Now, you can see how bad those current shunts look. Poor, poor copper wires. But anyways, all right, let me get this front off. Please hold. Okay, so got the front off. It was just taking uh, screws there from the metal to plastic, which is fucking terrible and then the two bottom ones going there and there uh which that reminds me uh dave tore one of these down in like one of his first videos and uh the plastic to metal thing reminded me of that i'm pretty sure there was another problem where it was like not the same height Uh, well, here, let's just turn this back on real quick. Okay. So, from the bottom to the top there, that's going to be four and Yeah, that's about an eighth of an inch difference. Cool. Yeah, that's on there enough. That's sad. The roll looks like they did pretty good on that. That's a very pretty board. That's weird. The copper's starting to come up. Starting to bubble there. Well, like I said, it was around some nasty fumes for quite some time. I think it was refining silver for me for like a year, year and a half. And then I took it out of my refining lab and moved it in here. And as you can tell by those sad looking uh, screws there it has been through hell uh, TL431 that's gonna be uh, I assume putting their minimum current load on the regulator for the 5 volt because coincidentally it's right here by the 5 volt by the 5 volt oh wow that screen is Pretty filthy. Don't mind that. And look, 
Whoever bitched, I cleaned up the desk before. See? See? Don't look over there. See? It's perfect. Anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna call that good. There's really not much more I can tear down or show. Seven four shit. Huh. So uh, these have their full own completely isolated channels from one another. Like completely. That's why they have those uh two positive and two negative twelve volt regulators back there. The channel one and channel two have nothing to do with each other. So I bet those big ass filter caps in the back, one's going to channel one, one's going to channel two. Because right here, they even have those little medium power transistors there. Those are what's given the 2SD1047s in the back its base current drive. So, yeah. Anyways, I want to unsolder and resolder it in. And, uh, that's all. Bye.